Okay, so we're doing the differential equations topic. This is example 11. It's a first order differential equation, and we're going to use the integrating factor method. If you haven't watched example 10, please do so, because it takes you through the kind of theory behind it, where uh, the proof of why we're going to do it. We're, in this example, we're just going to use the, the technique. No explanation as to where the, the different formulas come from. So uh, straight away, we can see that what we need with our dy by dx term is it should be a unitary term. In other words, this x multiplier can't be there. So to use the, the integrating factor method, we have to make sure that our equation just starts dy by dx. So we're going to have to effectively divide everything through by x, first of all, to leave us with the equation dy by dx plus x minus 2x times y equals x squared. And that means that I've then got a unitary dy by dx. I've got this, which is my p of x term, and we've got this, which is my q of x term. So I can write down at the side, p of x is going to be x minus 2 over x, and q of x, which we're going to come back to, is x squared. So the first thing I want to find out is the integrating factor. mu, integrating factor, mu of x is given by the expression e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. I explained why we use that. Uh, so the first thing I would normally do is just work out, without it being in the exponential function, and work out what the integral of p of x dx is, which is We've got the integral of x minus 2 over x dx. Okay, so we've got a wee fraction there. Um, don't get too uh, caught up with it. It's not like we don't have to use substitution or anything like that. We can just simplify, we can split up the x um, minus 2 over x into x over x minus 2 over x, which becomes 1 minus 2x to the negative 1. Okay? Or 2 over x. So if I integrate that, 1 integrates to x, and then we've got minus 2 times the natural log of x plus c, and that becomes our value of p. Okay? So, uh, mu of x, come back to here, it's e to the power of x minus 2 log x. So a wee bit of an issue here in the fact that we've got um, we don't have an instant way to simplify it here. Uh, what could we do? Uh, well, what we could do is we could take the, we always want to try and take the multiplier to a power anyway because that will help us simplify it. So that we could say that it becomes e to the power x plus the log of x to the negative 2. There's various ways to simplify this, but this is one of them. Um, we can then say that because it's a, a, a sum of powers, we could then split that up into e to the x multiplied by e to the power log x. The negative 2, which becomes e to the x multiplied by x to the negative 2, because the e and the natural log will cancel out the inverses of each other. And so we end up with e to the x over x squared as our value of mu of x, okay? So, uh, that's us got our integrating factor. The next thing we can do is actually work out the function itself, okay? We're going to work out a general solution, so we'll write that down. General solution, and what's the rule that we've got? That the general solution y is equal to 1 over mu of x multiplied by the integral of mu of x q of x dx. Okay, so it's just a case of then substituting in. Um, the inverse uh, fraction of mu of x is just going to be x squared over e to the x. Switch over the numerator and denominator, and then we're going to have the integral of e to the x over x squared multiplied by 
q of x, which if we look back to the very beginning, q of x is x squared. If, if it doesn't simplify, uh, then something's gone a bit wrong, because usually there's a way that we simplify this product um, from before we integrate it. And of course here, these are going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with y equals uh, the integral of is just going to be e to the x dx, which is going to be e to the x itself. Plus c. Just keep that in brackets because it, the, the plus c is important here, which means that if we finish that off, we multiply in by our 1 over mu of x, we're going to get just x squared as our first term, uh, plus then we've got x squared c over e to the x, or this constant term here. So that's going to be the general solution of my differential equation. Okay. So two things that we're doing, we're finding the integrating factor based on our chosen values of p of x and q of x, and then we're using the formula for the general solution to substitute that in. And it all comes from initially realizing that our uh, dy by dx term has to be a unitary term, so we have to multiply or divide through by x. Okay, all that's been of use. You can go on and try uh, the other examples.